Hey, Chef Mike here. We are gonna make beautiful, classic Barnegat Bay Blue Claw Crab Cakes for you today the real way. Stay tuned. It's gonna be perfect for your table. Okay, the first thing you wanna do is whoever is going to be enjoying the crabs, you gotta get them to help pick them. So you just steam them off and sit down, grab everybody a beer, and let them start picking because it's, it's a job. Now, I've often been asked, what's your favorite kind of crab meat? Because most people will say Alaskan or Alaskan king crab or Dungeness. I tell you, I will put our Barnegat Bay big blue caulk crabs against anybody. The challenge is it's a lot of work. I, I usually refer to it as a, a crab boil or something as an event because it's an event. So get them started picking while you do the other mise en place for the dish. So while you get the rest of the crew picking the crab, let's get started. What we're going to do first is take about a tablespoon of olive oil over a medium flame. Let that oil get hot and then we're going to saute a few of the ingredients that go in. Now these are really simple but these are real crab cakes. Not breaded, not packed with breadcrumbs. These are drop crab cakes that it, I'm telling you are going to be perfect for the table. So we'll let that get hot and then what we're going to add is a half a cup of minced onion, a half a cup of celery minced, and a half a cup of, or actually a quarter cup of minced red bell pepper. Now I'm going to show you a little trick on how to do the red bell pepper that makes it just simple and makes you waste a lot less and just makes your life a lot simpler in the kitchen. So you know I like to give you as many tips and tricks as possible. So I'm going to teach you how to do a, a red bell pepper. A lot of people waste a lot of red bell pepper and it's just not, not the way to go. So the easiest way to do it is to cut the top, cut the bottom. Don't throw this, but save it for something else, even if it's a snack. Then cut it down and we're going to go inside and we're going to cut the pulp and the seeds out. All right, I'm going to discard that, trim down these veins a little bit, all right, and now you're ready to start doing whatever you want to do with it. So we're going to make a very fine dice of these. And just save the rest of the pepper because we don't need a whole pepper for something else, even if it's a snack for the kids. So now we're just going to saute the vegetables here until they're just a little bit cooked translucent. The onions become translucent and that way you know they're ready to go. And then we're going to have to let that cool. So once we're done sauteing, we'll start adding the extra ingredients to the crab. By that time it should be cool and we can get ready to cook them off. So that's sauteed now for, I don't know, maybe three minutes. The vegetables are nice and translucent. We're just going to put that aside and let it cool, okay, before we mix it in with the crab. And in the meanwhile, we'll mix the rest of the ingredients and get ready. Okay, so the crew did a pretty good job, <laughs> I have to admit. Jack really was uh, the leader of the pack here picking this, but you see how beautiful. These were gorgeous crabs. So now what we're going to do is take literally just a little bit of mayonnaise, right? It's a quarter of a cup of mayonnaise. This is kind of what sets this apart. It's, it's going to be drop crab cakes that are delicious. Then we're going to take the juice of a half of a lemon, okay? And then we're going to take a little bit of lemon zest. Now the way we're going to do that is we're going to use a kitchen tool, which really isn't a kitchen tool, or it is now, but it wasn't years ago, called a microplane. This was a carpenter's tool to do fine woodwork shavings. So what we're going to do is take this microplane, this is one of the originals, you can buy them now in any culinary shop, and we're going to grate just a little, you see how that beautiful zest comes off? We're just going to add about a teaspoon of the grated fine zest of the lemon. And what that does, folks, is it gives it a little bit of a freshness cue. You hear me talk about freshness cues all the time, and it's just those little bit of difference 
that makes it good to great. Okay, we just add that in there. Now we'll go to our parsley. So this is about a quarter cup of chopped Italian parsley. Put that in. Then just a tablespoon of Old Bay seasoning. If you prefer a different kind of a crab seasoning, please, by all means, use it. And then we're going to do a quarter of a cup of Reggiano Parmigiana cheese. Okay, now we're ready to add our cooled vegetables. So we'll just take that and we'll just scoop that right in there. You don't want to put it in too hot because it'll just make the uh, mayonnaise break, meaning separate. Okay, so we have that ready to go. Now we're going to add the last two ingredients, which are one egg and the secret ingredient which are saltines. Now this is a half of a sleeve of saltine crackers, the original ones with salt, and that's just gonna make it, that's gonna set it apart as well. Now if you noticed, I haven't mixed it yet, and I haven't mixed it yet for a reason. You don't wanna over mix this, because if you over mix it, you know, there's no sense picking them carefully, because we are looking for big chunks of uh, lump meat crab that makes it different and better and delicious. So now we're just going to take a single egg and we're going to break it and throw it in there. The saltines give it a very light mix and we're ready to go. Now we're just going to mix it just a little bit, folks. If you, if you over mix it, you're going to ruin all that beautiful big pieces of lump crab. Now the reason we wanted to chill that crab mixture, that crab cake mixture, is so that the crushed saltines have the opportunity to absorb some of the flavor and get soft. Otherwise you're going to be eating you know, sawdust. So while that's chilling, we're going to make our sauce. And that's, we're going to make a very simple sauce that I'm going to call my kind of tartar sauce. I think you'll see what I mean. So we're going to take about two cups of mayonnaise, prepared mayonnaise. We could make mayonnaise, but I'm not going to make you go through that effort. Then we're going to take a quarter cup of minced celery. We're going to take a quarter cup of minced onion. Then we're going to take about three quarters of a cup of sweet pickle relish, the juice of half a lemon, and then to your taste, to your liking, hot sauce. So I am going to put about a good tablespoon of Chihula hot sauce in there and just mix all this around. Like I said, that's my kind of tartar sauce. Put it back in the fridge, let it chill out while we cook. So we crab. have our chilled crab cake mixture. You can see these big pieces of blue claw crab. Lump meat is just gorgeous. The last thing we want to do before we cook them is always taste. Make sure it has enough salt or, you know, whatever. So, oh, I'm telling you, this is going to be perfect for your table. Absolutely delicious. All right. Next thing we'll have to do is cooking. Now this one pound of crab with those vegetables will make about a dozen two ounce crab cakes. Now the easiest way to do this is go from a scoop, an ice cream scoop, right into the pan. So before we do that, what we're going to do is just put a touch of olive oil in that and swirl it around. That means the crab cakes will come out easier. We're going to put a, just about a tablespoon of olive oil in the pan. We're going to put this on medium to high flame, let that heat up, and get ready to rock and roll. So now we're ready to go. We're just going to take an ice cream scoop and put there about two ounces. We have that on medium flame, and we're going to drop probably six of them. Because generally, you know I like odd numbers of things. So Dan and I are going to have this for lunch. So let's do six of them to start. Now, the good thing about this batter is it'll last a couple days in the fridge. You don't want to cook them all out now because it just doesn't do it justice. Turn that flame back a little because we don't want to burn it. 
Now what's special about these is you can tell there's not a whole lot of filler in these. It's probably a good 90% crab meat and it's going to be delicious and perfect for your table. So you can see these are falling apart slightly and that's okay because again there's very little filler in here. It's mostly crab. So what we want to do is just take our spatula and we're using a plastic spatula because we're using a Teflon pan and just push them down a little bit. And if you lose a little on the side, those are bonus crispies. All right, so it's been about three minutes and now we're ready to flip them. So we'll just take a, again, a plastic spatula because this is a non-stick pan and we're just gonna flip these. Okay, we might have to move them around. That one's perfect, this one's a little underdone. Those are, those are Barnegat Bay crab cakes, folks. Let those sit and cook, and another three minutes, we're ready to eat. I can see uh, Captain Dan salivating in the corner, so I'm going to plate these up and we'll get to it. So you can see how nice and crisp they are. Now I'm doing two separate presentations today. One is a presentation that if we were going to eat it as a, a, an appetizer, so there's one cake each. Another presentation if we were going to serve it as an entree. So we take some sliced lemon, some Italian parsley. I'm going to put a little bit of... Old Bay seasoning on those lemons so that if you do squeeze it on there, it's got a little bit of zip. Then we have my kind of cocktail sauce. We'll just take a tablespoon, put some down, and then just draw it forward. Same here, just a little mound. Not too much because you don't want to you don't want to mask the taste of that beautiful crab. Really, what you want to do is just accent it, right? Make sure the plates are clean and we're ready to go. So as we've grown accustomed to, I'm going to bring the skipper in for the first bite. So skipper. Looks good, Mike. Let's do this together. I have a question. Yeah. How come you never made this? For you? For anybody. Well, I guess you made it for other people. You never made it for me. We caught a ton of crabs. I don't know, Dan. I've got to no. hold some stuff back. It's 100% crab. No silly breading or potato or unnecessary fillers it's really good how about my kind of cocktail sauce i, I, I didn't try it yet i'm trying it now mm -hmm. real good thumbs up yeah thumbs up all right so as always one of the reasons i love the skipper is he brought a great wine why don't you explain it to the folks it's an italian white it's called um la scola and it's um Bianco Sicco, which is dry white wine, and it goes very well with this. Very well. It goes well with almost very anything, well. tell you the truth. Let's put this down and toast it. So stay safe out there. Practice selective harvest. We'll see you on the water soon.